We're here today with Dr. Lawrence Wolf, Section Chief of the Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery Section at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center, and today we're talking about our dental implant program. Dr. Wolf, can you tell me a little bit about what a dental implant is? A dental implant is a titanium root that replaces the uh, patient's existing teeth that might be lost because of uh, gum disease, trauma, uh, decay, and uh, it is something that integrates into the bone and becomes uh, an, an intimate part of the body. And it's, a, it's a, a structure that we can then build upon to restore with either crowns, bridges, dentures, or anything else and give uh, a tremendous amount of stability to that restoration. Can you tell me what some of the advantages might be of having a dental implant? Well, a dental implant is a very, uh, gives you a very natural restoration. It allows, uh, it very much allows you to not have a, uh, a large piece of plastic in your mouth, so it doesn't affect the taste of, uh, you know, the, 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 the taste buds. Uh, it doesn't affect phonetics, which means you can speak normally because you've got something in your mouth that has the shape of a natural tooth. Uh, they look very natural. So uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, the, the implants uh, are, 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 are great. The patients absolutely love them. Once they're, once they're in and they're finished, the patients forget about them. They, they act as though they are natural teeth again. And for all intents and purposes, they are natural teeth again. And, um, and so the, uh, there's, there's, there are tremendous advantages uh, in, that re in that respect. The, uh, the dental implants uh, allow us to to restore everything without a whole lot of other prosthetic uh, components in the mouth. And the biggest complaint that patients have, especially uh, on a lower jaw, is that uh, it's, it's very difficult to stabilize uh, any kind of lower prosthesis. And if we put implants in there, all of a sudden now, they, they don't have to take them out at night. They don't flop around while they're, while they're trying to talk. So their phonetics are, are, are very much preserved. And uh, it's, it's like giving them a, a second chance, a second lease on life. You know, they have, uh, they have their teeth sort of back in and uh, it instills a tremendous amount of confidence in the patient because they're, they're, not, they're not concentrating on, on keeping the position of a denture in their mouth. And it gives them, uh, it just makes people just feel better about themselves. And can you tell me what's involved in a dental implant procedure? The first procedure would be diagnosis and treatment planning. This is something that, uh, that uh, we are very, very good at here at Providence. Uh, the, a lot of the patients that we have that are, are getting, uh, that are candidates for implants, uh, are also right now taking certain uh, pharmaceuticals such as a bisphosphonate for osteoporosis. Uh, in the treatment planning process, not only do we do a, a CT scan, which is a uh, which is a very very sophisticated three-dimensional X-ray, but we also do a, a lot of blood work to determine if that patient is a good candidate for the implant surgery. Patients that are currently taking bisphosphonates, unfortunately, uh, uh, I might not be a great candidate immediately for implants because the bisphosphonate alters the the blood supply within the bone, and that affects healing. Uh, not in the, not only in the mouth, but in all the other uh, uh, bones in the body. So before we before we begin an, an implant surgery, we want to make sure that that patient is a good candidate, and we run the appropriate blood tests to make sure that the patient's level of bisphosphonate in their system is is not too high to allow good healing after the surgery. Mm -hmm. After the patient is properly diagnosed with both uh, blood work and a CT exam, then the patient is scheduled for surgery. The surgery is performed here at the hospital. We do a, we do a, a fantastic job of maintaining what's called sterile clean technique, which is something that is very difficult to do in an office setting. And the patients after surgery do extremely well. Their discomfort level is very, very low. And that's, that's also because of a lot of the, uh, the procedures we use intraoperatively that allows them to wake up feeling uh, not a whole lot of discomfort. And keeping in mind that bone itself does not have any nerves, as long as you treat the rest of the tissues properly, the patients will do very, very well after surgery. 
And the third step would be the actual restoration of the implants. And what I mean by that is, is once the implants have integrated, once the bone has properly grown into the implants and the implants are stable, that takes, which by the way, takes about three and a half months, then the patient uh, is ready for restoration. What that means is that the patient would see their dentist out in town and they would have the final uh, the final prostheses done. Now that it would be, let's say, it could be crowns, it could be bridges, it could be uh, what's what's called a an overdenture, something that is uh, that is a, like a very very large bridge, but is supported by multiple implants, and um, and that's that's basically putting the teeth back in in the patient's mouth. Mm -hmm. And approximately how long does a dental implant procedure take? The process takes uh, about six months uh, with the current technology that we have on implants. It takes about a month to do all of the treatment planning and, and work up for the procedure. The surgery takes just a couple hours and then uh, the healing after the surgery is about three and a half months. And then once the, the patient has healed, you're looking probably about another month or six weeks to complete the restorations. It could be two weeks if it's something very simple, and it could be six weeks if, if it's something very complicated. And who is a good candidate for a, a dental implant procedure? Anybody that is missing a tooth is a good candidate, candidate for a dental implant. The, uh, the age category is, is anybody that has already re reached facial growth maturity, which is Usually in, uh, in, in girls, it's about 16 to 17 years old, and in uh, boys, it's about 18 to 19 year old. And uh, once, once they have reached their, their uh, facial growth maturity, then there's no reason why an implant can't be uh, used as a, as a definitive restoration. And as far as the upper age limit, there is no upper age limit. We have placed implants into patients that are 97 years old, and uh, and many of our imp uh, many of our patients are already in Medicare age. So, uh, bone is an active organ, meaning that bone doesn't just grow and and is static. So it is always getting replenished, and so the bone that you have today is not the bone that you had uh, two months ago. And so it doesn't matter how old you are. If you put an implant in there, the bone is going to integrate into that implant, regardless of age. Are dental implant procedures something that is covered by a patient's insurance? Insurance uh, sometimes covers dental, dental implants. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. It very much depends on the policy. We have found that with, uh, with, our, with our older patients that do have Medicare coverage, that implants, the, the implant procedure is covered very well. The only criteria is that the patient has to have a, a regular Medicare plan. He cannot be under a specific uh, HMO plan that would not allow them to come to our hospital. And what are the advantages of having this procedure done at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center? The advantages of having it done here at Providence would be the, the fact that we have the, the highest level of technology, both from a diagnostic standpoint and a surgical standpoint. We are a master simplant center. We can do guided stent procedures, and, and that is minimally invasive for the patients. That makes the post-operative uh, event a lot more comfortable. We have board certified anesthesiologists that will take care of the patient during surgery, will administer all the medications necessary to make their stay you know, very, very comfortable, and their post-operative uh, uh, recovery much easier than, uh, than it would be done in a, a regular office setting. Mm -hmm. Also, the, um, the surgeons we have on staff that perform the procedure are, uh, have got decades and decades of experience. Thank you very much for your time today, Dr. Wolf. That was very informative.